Chapter 4 introduced and explained how to use the general journal and the general ledger. Chapter 5 shows how to complete and use the worksheet. It also shows how to prepare and record adjustments for unrecorded business transactions. We will also continue using the general journal and general ledger to journalize and post the new adjusting entries introduced in the chapter. Section 1 of the chapter introduces us to a worksheet. Let's begin by entering the trial balance on the worksheet. What is a worksheet? It is a tool that accountants use at the end of an accounting period. The worksheet has three parts to the heading, just like a financial statement. The heading answers who, what, and when. The first column of a worksheet is the account name column. The worksheet has five sections. Each section has a debit and credit column. So this can also be called a 10-column worksheet. To enter a trial balance on the worksheet, you would follow these steps. The first step is to enter the general ledger account names. We will need to add four new accounts at this time so that we can make adjustments at the end of the month. If you are not sure whether you need any additional accounts or what those account names will be, remember you can add them at the bottom of the existing list of accounts in that column. Next, using the general ledger, we transfer the account balances to the debit and credit columns of the trial balance section. After entering all of the balances from the general ledger, we need to foot the columns in the trial balance section. To foot a column means to add the numbers in that column. They must balance before moving to the next set of columns. When you ensure that the debits equal the credits, you are ready to complete step 4, which is to place a double rule underline under the trial balance columns to show that the work in the columns is complete. Now it is time to move to the next set of columns. We need to prepare adjustments for unrecorded business transactions. Let's make some adjustments. The process of updating accounts at the end of an accounting period for unrecorded items that belong to the period is referred to as making adjustments or adjusting entries. The adjustments are made in the adjustments column. Let's first discuss the supplies adjustment. The business purchased $1,500 of supplies during the month, but by the end of the month, only $1,000 of supplies are left. This implies that we must have used $500 of supplies. Wells Consulting Services must make an adjustment to show that the company used $500 in supplies during the month. To do this, we debit supplies expense and credit the asset supplies for the $500 used up. We can use the worksheet to show this adjustment. We credit the supplies account $500 and debit the supplies expense account $500. Notice the letter A by both of the adjustments. By keying the adjustments with a letter reference, the accountant can better see the debit and credit amounts of the adjustment. Now let's take a look at the adjustment for expired rent. Recall that the company paid for two months rent in advance. By the end of the month, one month had expired so we need to reduce the prepaid rent account by the amount for one month's rent. When we originally paid the two months of rent, we debited prepaid rent and credited cash. This means that one month of rent was equal to $4,000. Wells Consulting Services must make an adjustment to show that $4,000 of the prepaid rent has expired. We will debit the rent expense account by $4,000 and credit the prepaid rent account by $4,000. Here is how we enter the adjustment in the worksheet. Notice the letter B has been placed next to both the debit and the credit. Now let's move on to the concept of depreciation. When we buy an asset that will be used for many years, we will expense a portion of the cost of the asset during each of the periods that the asset benefits. This is called depreciation. Depreciation is the process of allocating the cost of long-term assets over their useful lives. We do not record the cost as an expense at the time that the asset was purchased. The cost is recorded as an asset, such as equipment or building, and charged to the expense over the time the asset is used in the business. This periodic expensing of the original cost is called cost allocation or depreciation. We will be using the straight line depreciation method to figure the periodic adjustment for depreciation. The salvage value of an asset represents what we estimate it will be worth at the end of its useful life. 
When figuring depreciation, we need to understand what salvage value means. Salvage value is an estimate of the amount that may be received by selling or disposing of an asset at the end of its useful life. The equipment does not have any salvage value, and we expect to use it for five years in the business. In applying the straight-line formula, we calculate a monthly depreciation amount of $183. In making the $183 depreciation adjustment, we do not credit the asset account directly. Instead, we credit a different account. We will credit a contra-asset account called Accumulated Depreciation Equipment. This account will accumulate the amount of the asset's cost that has been expensed, depreciated, over the life of the asset. Letter C is written next to the debit and credit of the journal entry in the worksheet that shows the depreciation adjustment. When all of the adjustments have been completed, foot the columns to ensure that they balance. Book value shows what the asset's net cost is on the books of the business. By net cost, we mean its original cost less the depreciation taken to date. It is the unexpensed portion of the original cost. The book value of our equipment right after the first depreciation adjustment is $11,000 minus $183 equals $10,817. The third objective of the chapter is to be able to complete the worksheet. Take a look at the steps of the accounting cycle. We are now ready to prepare the next set of columns on the worksheet. Notice that the third section of the worksheet is the adjusted trial balance section. This is where we do horizontal math and combine the first set of columns with the second set of adjustment columns. Cash had no adjustments, so its balance carries over to the adjusted trial balance section. The same with accounts receivable and so on. Our first account, which had an adjustment, is supplies. It started with a $1,500 debit balance, then we credited it for $500. We carry the new adjusted balance of $1,000 to the adjusted trial balance section. The second adjustment was to record the expired rent. The third adjustment was for depreciation. After each one, the new extended total is carried over to the trial balance. Make sure to foot the columns of the adjusted trial balance section to ensure that they balance. Now we move to the final steps of completing the worksheet. Transfer the accounts which belong on the balance sheet to the balance sheet section. Transfer the accounts which belong on the income statement to the income statement section. Only assets, liabilities, and the owner's capital account belong on the balance sheet. Revenues and expenses belong on the income statement. The only exception to this rule of balance sheet and income statement is the drawing account. This account, when included in the adjusted trial balance, is moved over to the balance sheet section, even though it doesn't show up on that statement. Rather, it shows up on the Statement of Owner's Equity. After all balances have been transferred, foot the four columns. Notice that the totals of the last two sections, Income Statement and Balance Sheet, do not balance. More on the next slide. Focus on the Income Statement section and subtract the smaller column total from the larger column total. You will notice that the totals of the columns do not balance. The difference is considered net income or net loss. For Wells Consulting Services, they had $33,667 of net income for the period. Place this amount in the debit column so that both of the income statement columns now balance. Place the same amount of $33,667 in the credit column of the balance sheet section. After doing this, the two columns of the balance sheet section will also balance. This has the effect of adding the net income to the owner's capital account. Notice it's on the credit side of the balance sheet section. You can see that the footed columns of the income statement and balance sheet sections now balance. Preparing the financial statements is the fifth step in the accounting cycle. Objective 4 requires that we prepare an income statement Statement of Owner's Equity and Balance Sheet from the completed worksheet. Use the Income Statement section of the worksheet for the amounts to carry to the Income Statement. You can see that the Income Statement is now easy to prepare. 
It's just a matter of transferring the numbers over into a proper income statement format. The Statement of Owner's Equity reports the changes that have occurred in the owner's financial interest, the owner's capital account, during the reported period. Here is the Statement of Owner's Equity for Wells Consulting Services. The beginning capital balance came from the unadjusted trial balance column. The amount of net income came from the worksheet. In addition to the account form of a balance sheet that was previously used in Chapter 4, there is also a report form of a balance sheet, which shows the balance sheet data in a vertical format. In actual practice, the report form is used most often. And here it is. This balance sheet has been prepared using a report form format. All accounts, both asset and liabilities and owner's equity, are listed. Remember, a worksheet is just a tool that accountants use. It is not a formal financial statement. The adjustments shown on the worksheet must become part of the permanent accounting records. Each adjustment is journalized and posted to the general ledger accounts. The fifth objective of this chapter is to journalize and post the adjusting entries. Recording the adjusting journal entries is also the sixth step in the accounting cycle. Here is the first adjusting journal entry, which has been posted to the supplies expense ledger account. You can take a moment and review the posting steps. The other ones are posted in a similar manner. After all adjustments have been posted, all accounts in the financial records are up to date. Adjustments are usually made on the last day of the accounting period.